coast and Kenya has welcomed 576 tourists who have arrived at the port of Mombasa aboard cruise ship MS Nautica, marking the first cruise ship arrival to the country this year. The cruise ship arrived in Mombasa at 6.30 a.m. from Zanzibar and is scheduled to make a one-day stop before it sails onward to Mahe Island in the Seashells. <laughs> And uh, during the one-day stop, the tourists will visit Amboseli National Park and also tour various parts of Mombasa, including the iconic Fort Jesus historical site in Mombasa. The arrival of the cruise ship comes barely a fortnight after MS Silver Spirit, a luxury cruise ship with 472 passengers on board, made its maiden stop in Mombasa. Speaking soon after the arrival of MS Nautica, Kenya Tourism Board Chief Executive Dr. Betty Radier welcomed the arrival of the cruise ship, saying its arrival is yet another major boost to the coastal region's tourism sector, even as the festive season comes to an end. Quite interesting. Those are, of course, file pictures. We'll be getting the actual ship pictures in our subsequent bulletins. Moving on, Kenyans will now be forced to dig deeper into their pockets to be able to afford maize flour as the government subsidy that was introduced last year ended on the 31st of December. The prices of most brands are expected to double even as the government says the maize situation in the country has stabilized. Some retailers are already selling a 2 kg packet of maize at 185 shillings, which is more than double of what Kenyans enjoyed during the subsidy period. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Willie Bett, however, says the prices should not go beyond 120 shillings. In May last year, the government announced a 6 billion subsidy on maize imports to help lower the cost of maize flour. If the government says that the unga will rise up to 150, so many people won't be able to afford the price. And we'll, in fact, the poverty level will now start to increase, you know. So I think the, the government should think about others. There are others who can afford the price, while others they can't. An average Kenyan works for 100 bopa per day. So currently, maize flour is like 140, 140, 130. If maize flour is 130 and I work for 100, uh, 2 kg to 130, and I work for 100 bob a day, so it, it simply means I'll be working for one packet of flour in a day. As a Kenyan, I've never bought flour from the supermarket. I usually go back home, I take it from my mother. Um, I've been brought up in this kind of tradition whereby I don't shop for such, certain stuff. Eh? Whenever I visit home, they just give me a portion of what they have already. Um, put in store at home. Well, indeed, a tough January for many consumers. A new report by Cyton Investments Company shows that the real estate sector in 2017 experienced a, a, experienced a big pardon, a slowdown due to the political uncertainty brought about by the extended electioneering period and thus cautious investors postponed making purchase decisions. The sector was further constrained by oversupply in some segments such as the commercial office and the credit constraints due to the interest rate cap that resulted in slower credit to the private sector growth from a five-year Compound annual growth rate of 14.4% to a low of 2.4% as at October 2017. Development activity reduced, evidenced by the 18.4% reduction in the value of building approvals in Nairobi between January and July 2017 to 149.5 billion 
from 183.2 billion shillings during the same period in 2016. According to Saiton's 2017 real estate review, the sector recorded rental yields of 9.6% in retail, 9.2% in commercial office, and 5.2% in residential sector, resulting to an average rental yield for the real estate market of 8%, compared to 7.8% in 2016. Capital appreciation in Nairobi and its metropolis averaged at 6.5% in 2017 from 18% in 2016, and thus the real estate sector recorded a total return of 14.5% in 2017 compared to returns of 25.8% in 2016, showing a slowdown in real estate operators' performance. The report suggests that the real estate will recover in 2018 given the high housing demand and the large housing deficit pegged at 200,000 units annually. Other key growth drivers will be infrastructure upgrades as well as new government incentives to spur affordable housing development.